So I think this must be the middle of the semester. Or is it after the middle? It's the middle, actually. So middle. So I think we are approximately where uh, we should be uh, in terms of uh, our plan. Uh, we're not going to be able to do everything I uh, initially mentioned for that list of topics, but uh, it is far too ambitious. Uh, so we're looking at uh, random testing. And uh, so last time, I was mentioning about the detectability profile idea. And uh, as I was mentioning, we uh, introduced uh, uh, it in uh, 1984. And after we introduced it, uh, nothing happened for a couple of years. Nobody paid any attention to it until people uh, such as at Stanford they uh, uh, found this uh, uh, to be a, 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 a good idea, and then they have used it. And then after that, other people have also used it. So basically, uh, uh, I was uh, uh, we were uh, struggling with trying to find out how does the coverage grow uh, as you apply a number of tests when you are doing random testing. Actually, the question is there even if when you are not doing random testing. But here we are assuming random testing. And uh, uh, you apply a number of random patterns. So what is that you have achieved uh, after having applied a, a number of uh, random vectors? And uh, I was introducing this notation. And so this is the detectability profile. So a detectability profile is a partition of uh, all the potential faults. So here, n is the total number of uh, possible vectors. If you have a combinational circuit with, uh, let us say, five inputs, n is equal to 2 raised to 5. H sub k is the number of faults detected by exactly k vectors. And uh, total faults this say m and that would be equal to the sum of all these hk so basically hk is the number of faults with a certain detectability and i had to mention about detectability of a fault equal to k by n if it is if it has k tests. So detectability of a fault will range from uh, somewhere between uh, close to Zero. Uh, zero means, of course, uh, undetectable. So close to zero. So it could be like, uh, let's say, if you have, we can apply a million possible vectors, then a very fault with low detectability could be one in a million. On the other hand, a fault with high detectability, uh, here would be a fault which is detected <coughs> by any vector that you apply. So this fault is almost certain to be detected even if you apply a single vector, whereas this fault is one of the least likely to be detected. 
Now the question is, is there something like a typical fault in a uh, uh, system that has faults, software or hardware? And last time I uh, gave a uh, uh, couple of uh, examples, for example, uh, detectability profile for a couple of uh, pieces of hardware. I will show you some numbers for uh, software. But let us consider the coverage. with and random vectors. And uh, probability that a fault with uh, detectability by n not detected by a vector that is equal to 1 minus k by n. Right? Oh, forgot one here. Okay, how does this look? Does it look reasonable? Probability that I found for detectability k by n is not detected by a vector, a randomly chosen vector, by a random okay. What if we apply L vectors probability that a fall with detectability in K by N not detected by L random vectors, let me abbreviate here, and if here is equal to 1 minus k by n raised to <coughs> l. Not detected by first, not detected by second. Each application is statistically independent because testing is random. So each time a vector is randomly chosen, right? Okay. Now here, consider this. Let us consider a partition with h sub k faults. Now in this partition, all these faults have the same detectability. <coughs> Expected not covered is equal to 1 minus k by n is to L multiplied by H sub K. So after H sub K number of faults, the expected number that would not be covered after having applied L vectors would be this. And hence, expected test coverage for the whole circuit is given by, let us indicate it by C, a function of L, and that is equal to summation of I equal to, I'm sorry, K equal to 1 to N, 1 minus K by N raised to L, N sub K by M. M is the total number of faults. So remember, this is the number of faults and this is the coverage. So coverage, of course, is a normalized measure because coverage uh, goes from anything to one. So here's the expert. So this is the important formula. And uh, just to see what that uh, means, let me uh, expand that and let's look at some of the terms there. So basically we are saying that CL is equal to 1 minus, <coughs> so here I'll, uh, let me show you two, three terms there, 1 minus 1 by N, let's assume that the uh, lowest value of K is 1 in the detectability profile, 
H1 by M plus the second term would be 1 minus 2 by N multiplied by H2 by M L plus and let me give you the last couple of terms and how about 1 minus N minus 1 by N raised to L H sub N minus 1 by M plus 1 minus N divided by N if there are any faults that are such that each of the fault is tested by all the vectors. In other words, you pick any uh, vector at random, faults here will be tested. So notice here, okay, look at the term in the bracket. This refers to faults with the least detectability. This refers to the faults with highest detectability. And notice that this term here, let's consider this term here. Well, this term is zero. So let's not even worry about that, right? Because it's uh, one minus one, so that's zero. Now this term here, notice that this term is uh, rather close to zero. And remember, any, if, if you have a number that is less than one, and it was raised to something 5, 10, 100, 200, then it will quickly approach zero if the term is small. So this will, this term approaches zero quickly. Right? Because this term is small. Now on the other hand, this term here, it is just a little less than one. So this term will decrease slowly, right? So this term, notice that it uh, decreases slowly. Decreases much slower. Okay, so what's the observation here? As you keep testing, as you, um, as the number L becomes larger and larger, in other words, as you are approaching near uh, total coverage, what will happen is that these terms will drop off and these terms are the only terms that are going to remain. So in other words, after you have done some testing, the parts that remain are the ones that are hard to test. Okay, uh, how does that sound? So let's, uh, does it seem like a reasonable thing? Can you say that again, please? Yeah, so if you keep testing, mm -hmm. then the faults remaining are likely to be the ones that are hardest to find. Right? right? Because for the faults that are easy to find, you're likely to pick them up earlier. Right. So basically it is uh, like this, that you have a, a tree with fruit, and so there's the English term, that you can pick up, you get the low hanging fruit, that are easy to pick, to pick them up. So what is left? Uh, food that further away. So basically, far that are hard to test, those are the ones that are left behind. Mm -hmm. And now this means that uh, the farts are not the same thing. All the farts are not the same. Yes. And in fact, at the, as you approach higher coverage, the behavior would be controlled by farts with the low detectability mm -hmm. because they are the ones that are left behind, right? And so if you will consider, uh, so a fault with high, uh, um, I have some uh, uh, analysis here, but uh, it's easy to see. So I'm going to uh, sort of uh, skip that. Um, incidentally, I should mention that this is for uh, uh, random testing. Now, there was some work done at uh, Stanford by Professor McCluskey and his uh, students. And uh, in 87, 
So they took, they took our 